Yeah. Thank you, Chris. So, uh, good afternoon. So, I'm really happy to give a talk uh, in Spark Summit. Uh, today, I will share how to maximize the performance by uh, reading the query plan and the Spark UI uh, from the viewpoint of insiders. So, about me, um, I'm an engineer manager uh, at Debris, uh, Spark Committer PMC member. Previously, I worked for IBM. I was an IBM master inventor. And also, my focus is on Spark database replication, information integration. Uh, I got my PhD in University of Florida, so that's why I'm data smart. <laughs> um, yeah, here is just a small sample set uh, of what does database looks like across the uh, industry. Um, we serve so many customers, so that's why uh, today I want to share my lessons. Uh, how we serve our customer, how to understand uh, the query plans from our uh, customers. Um, Debris uh, is founded by the original team who created uh, APH Spark. Uh, we provide a unified uh, platform that accelerates innovation by unifying data science, engineering, business, and it's powered by APH Spark. Um, it is uh, avail available in AWS and Azure. Uh, for advanced Spark users, the most important skill is how to maximize the performance of APH Spark. Today, I, um, I will focus on the, this topic. Um, uh, we will discuss how to read and tune the query plans for enhancing the performance. And then starting from 3.x, maybe 3.0, uh, we will have another new module called Spark Graph. So that is for graph processing, uh, which is based on the uh, third-party library Cypher on Spark. Um, yeah, we will migrate their code to, in, uh, to Spark. So you can see um, uh, now all the workloads like the Spark AML, Spark Streaming, Spark Graph, and uh, the other third-party library, and uh, your Spark workloads that use uh, SQL or different API actually uh, powered, optimized, executed by Spark SQL. Uh, so the most critical part is uh, Catalyst Optimizer and uh, Thompson Execution Engine. So yeah, you must see this uh, many times. So let me quickly uh, talk about the flow. Uh, basically, um, after we introduce uh, Spark Graph, uh, we have another uh, declarative API, Cypher, uh, for graph processing. And uh, um, basically, Spark SQL Engine is a compiler from the um, queries to RDDs. And the users can specify their queries using the uh, user-facing APIs, like uh, SQL, dataset, data frame, and Cypher. And the Cypher is uh, just a new declare API. Um, these user queries are converted to um, unresolved abstract uh, syntax trees. Uh, here we call unresolved uh, logic plan. And uh, um, the analyzer will check the metadata catalog and resolve the plan. Um, yeah, it will generate a resolved logic plan. And uh, our optimizer uh, we will apply like a heuristic based uh, rules, cost based rules uh, to improve your queries, uh, optimize your queries. And then um, our planner, um, yeah, will convert that based on, uh, will convert that to the uh, executable physical plan. Um, um, during the query planning stage, the sub plan could be pushed down to the underlying data source uh, if necessary. Uh, for efficient uh, processing, yeah, that depends. The logical plans are, yeah, are actually converted to the RDD DAX. So that is uh, includes um, transformation uh, actions on RDD, and uh, with uh, generated uh, Java code. Uh, the Java source code is uh, compiled uh, to Java bytecode and uh, executed at the runtime uh, by JVM, optimized by the uh, uh, JIT optimizer uh, to the native machine code at the runtime. So this is a very typical flow. 
uh, how we uh, convert the de declarative AP, uh, API to RDD. So now let's answer the original question, uh, how to maximize the performance of your Spark workload. So the, for boosting the speed of your Spark uh, application, you can perform the optimization efforts on the queries before employing the, uh, the, the, your workloads, uh, your queries to the production systems. And the Spark query plans and the Spark UI provide your insight on the performance of your queries. And to maximize the performance, the best way is to read the plan, understand plan, tune the plan, and check the query execution, and see whether it is consistent with what you expect. So the right side um, is a typical TPC edge query. Uh, now to understand how it is executed by Spark SQL, uh, we need to get the plan. Uh, to get the query plan, you can check the completed query in the SQL tab from the either Spark UI or history server. Of course, you also can get uh, the plan by calling the explain command or API. Uh, in Spark 2.0, uh, the description of the query is a little bit confusing. You can see show at a command and a random number, whatever. It's very hard to know which completed query and uh, are what you are looking for. So since 3.0, so we will show the SQL statement. So you can control how many characters uh, you want to display in the Spark UI. Uh, it will be easier for you to find out uh, uh, your query. Uh, so after you click the button, this button, actually uh, this uh, Spark.SQL and uh, select the SQL statement of this, after you click this link, uh, it will enter the details of this SQL uh, SQL query. You can see, first you can see the, uh, at the beginning, you can see the visualize the physical plan, and uh, you can scroll down, scroll down, you can see the text version. In the text version, uh, it includes a parse plan, analyze plan, and the optimize plan. Um, also the physical plan. Um, actually, in Spark 3.0, um, this will be changed for supporting adaptive um, query execution you will see the plan uh, change it at the wrong time. So uh, the format or the, the way is a little bit different, but uh, most of parts are same. Um, the next step, after you get the plan, the next step is to understand and tune your query plans. So uh, to help you understand how I did it for our customers, so I will show some examples. Um, and uh, yeah, taste by taste, uh, let's see. So this one, uh, this is very interesting. So you can see we create a temporary view, same temporary view, but the two query returns a different result. Uh, the only difference is the right side um, uh, in your filter condition. One is 0, 0.0, another is zero. But obviously, uh, in the first query, uh, 0 0.35 is not equal to 0, 0.0 but the second one, 0 0.35, is equal to zero. So this is maybe a surprise to most of you and also our customer. So, so, so how, to, how to find out why, what happened? So the, the best way is to read the plan and understand why. So if you read the analyze the plan, you can see some type, uh, some column, uh, the type are tested. Uh, like uh, in the first query, both sides are tested to double. Uh, but in the second query, only the left side is tested to integer. So Spark did the implicit type testing for you. So yeah, you can say it is good or bad, but uh, yeah, this is uh, <laughs> introduced at very beginning in the Spark. So we, um, before we introduce a new, um, like something like a street type testing uh, rule or correlation rules, uh, my, su my suggestion is uh, to explicitly cast the types in your queries to make sure the left and right side are same. 
Um, so this, at least, uh, you can help to avoid this uh, wrong results or unexpected results. Uh, okay, so let's talk about that. another typical issues like trade table. So I believe most of you, if you use the smart circle physically, you have to trade a table. So there's multiple different ways to trade a table. So here I just show the SQL. Um, yeah, uh, you can see we are using start as ORC. So actually, this is to create a Hive 3D table. Um, yeah, we Spark SQL basically will automatically convert the Hive 3D table uh, reading or writing uh, to native table reading and writing uh, for performance reasons. Uh, but if you turn it off, or if your table cannot be converted, whatever was, um, you first need to make sure uh, which reader you are using. Uh, if you read the plan, you can see uh, this is a table scan. Uh, the 30 reader is a Hive table relation, and 30 is the ORC 30, uh, Hive dot ORC 30. Actually, this is a slow. ORC, Hive ORC 30 is very slow compared with our native one, maybe 10 times slower. Uh, but if you turn it on, like uh, by default, this is on, actually. Convert meta store RC to true if it is on. You can see uh, we are using fire scan, so this is the native reader. Uh, the batch is a true, so that means we are using vectorized reader. Uh, compared with the hive, it is hive 30 is much faster. And also, you can see we push down the filter. Uh, Tall one is larger than three to the RC. And also the column pruning, you can see read schema. Actually, this also turn. In this case, we don't have a column pruning, but uh, yeah, in your query, you could trigger the column pruning. So that means you don't need to read all the columns from your files. Save your I.O. Um, so the tip is uh, whenever it is possible, create native table for better performance and stability. So our ORC uh, reader is using the latest ORC version. Uh, it has so many uh, bug fixes. Um, yeah, so this is a I mean, typical way to create a native ORC uh, table by using uh, ORC, not start as ORC, it's a using ORC. The only difference is this. Um, you always can check uh, your plan to make sure yeah, this is using our native reader and writer. The performance difference is huge. Okay, so yeah, the next is also very interesting. You specify, please specify, column one is larger than 3.0. However, this filter is not pushed down. You don't see the plan. The push down filter does not contain this filter. So this is very strange. Why? What's happened? And then maybe you can find out, okay, there's a filter called task column one to bit int. Actually, that's the reason the task cannot be pushed down because RC cannot handle the task. Uh, yeah, if, but we cannot remove it automatically because it will, could generate, a, I mean, the result is different. So what's the best way is like, if you can change the right side, like 3.0 to three, then, it can be pushed down. We are not. Uh, we don't need to add an actual cost for you. And uh, yeah, it's another very important uh, 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 still uh, way to improve the performance. The uh, schema pruning. So we don't need to read all the columns. So in the 2.4 release, we actually uh, has a nasty schema pruning for partit. And in uh, 3.0, we also do it for RC. Um, by default, this is a false, uh, but uh, let me show you uh, what's the behavior. Uh, you can see this is a typical data from uh, query. Uh, and then we save it to the table. Uh, and if you read the plan, uh, you can see uh, the read schema, the input schema actually contains uh, all the columns like uh, A, C, and D. Um, yeah, actually, 
But uh, if you check the query, we don't need all the columns. We just need uh, C, A dot C. We just select A dot C, right? So we don't need A dot D. So D uh, bit in this column can be pruned. Um, yeah, for the nested schema pruning in the previous release, uh, we don't have it, but uh, now we, we have it, but the default is uh, false. If you change the value to true, you can see the difference. Now, the D is uh, not read by Spark. So the performance could be, the performance difference could be huge. Uh, the next interesting thing is uh, CAPS projects. This is also very interesting. Uh, like, we select UDF, and then do the impression. We use this generated uh, new column called new column one. And this new column one is from uh, generated by, uh, from the UDF function call. Um, in the third impression, uh, you can see the second, the next line is uh, we uh, use this new column one three times. But the, the performance is bad. Why? If you read the plan, you can see, okay, so there's a three UDF call. Uh, of, of course, we don't need it. We just need once. Uh, then, because the UDF could be very pensive, then how to avoid it? Uh, yeah. So if you specify <laughs> as non-deterministic, so this uh, UDF will not be uh, optimized. Like we will not collapse the project for this UDF. So read the plan, you can see the UDF is only called once. So this is just a workaround. Uh, we we have a better solution, but uh, yeah. But uh, let's please check your query to make sure this is uh, correctly handled. Um, yeah, another potential issue is a uh, SQL cache. So SQL cache is uh, designed like a, um, whatever, but uh, this is a cross session. So that means if a query is cached in one session, uh, the new query in all the session uh, might be uh, impacted. So it, based on the semantic matching of your plan. So let's give an example. For example, if you in one session, you get the data from one table and the select person, like uh, uh, one, um, yeah, and uh, do the cache for this data from one. In the different, uh, like in another session, you try to read it, uh, like a, even a little bit different, like here is using, uh, uh, having an alias for the first, uh, first column, uh, column one plus column one as a new column one, but uh, the, the previous uh, cache version is uh, just without the uh, alias, but we can know their data results are same, so we will replace it automatically. Um, yeah, sometimes this is a cool, uh, this can save your performance because we don't need to uh, read the table at the end and uh, uh, avoid the actual uh, computation. Uh, yeah, so to make sure uh, your different, the other session or your other queries use the cache correctly, please check the, you can see the optimized plan. Uh, yeah, and also physical plan, you can see that we have a, a node called in-memory relation. And in 3.0, we introduced three new uh, join hint uh, called merge, shuffle hash, and the shuffle replicate and nested loop join. So uh, now, basically, um, you can specify all the join strategy starting from the 3.0. Previously, we only support broadcast, and that broadcast is only used for broadcast hash. Now it can be used for broadcast uh, nested loop join too. Okay, so after the plan, my, uh, you know, optimize the plan, uh, but actually uh, it is not always easy to tell uh, whether it is running optima optimally. If we can get a sense that something uh, isn't right, uh, you might need to tune the plan again or change the configuration of your uh, spark or cluster. So yeah, let's give some examples. 
Um, but it's a little bit confusing when you're reading the, our uh, Spark UI. So the reason is uh, the Spark UI at the very beginning is designed for RDD APIs. Uh, we convert the SQL query to the multiple Spark job, and this Spark job actually um, correspond to RDD. Uh, let me give an example. Um, so here, this is uh, the query uh, in the SQL tab. Um, you can see uh, this SQL tab, uh, there's uh, something called complete uh, queries. Uh, the right side, you can click the job ID. So this, you can get the corresponding jobs, Spark jobs. So a single Spark, uh, SQL query could correspond to multiple Spark jobs. Um, so let me give some examples. Uh, in current uh, Spark SQL, uh, it could trigger like broadcast change. Uh, broadcast change, shuffle change, and Scala subquery could uh, introduce uh, actual jobs. And uh, if you use uh, our new uh, data source, Delta Lake, uh, you could see um, many actual jobs because Delta Lake is using Spark to handle their metadata. So that's why you can see actual job for reading the metadata. And also in 3.0, you might see the new adaptive query execution framework. So that is also uh, change the way we uh, uh, generate the Spark jobs. You can see each stage will generate uh, new jobs uh, for collecting the statistics. Um, but whatever, so yeah, just uh, make sure you understand a single job, a single SQL query could generate multiple SQL job, uh, Spark jobs. And each Spark job actually is corresponds to uh, RDD DAG. So RDD DAG actually uh, is a chain of RDD dependency uh, organized uh, in a DAG. So uh, this is an example. Uh, in the left side, this is a higher level SQL, uh, physio, uh, uh, this is a physio plan. Uh, this physio plan is, uh, uh, is using all this operator, all these nodes actually are higher level SQL physical operators. And then the right side is uh, uh, the jobs, smart jobs. Uh, this uh, visualized uh, plan is a RDD plan. Uh, so it is uh, using the RDD APIs. So um, yeah. So this can help you to understand uh, the correspondence between the SPAR um, plan and the uh, RDD. Um, yeah. In the job tab, after you click that button, you will see the jobs for this uh, Spark query. Um, yeah. Uh, you can see uh, how long it takes for each job. Uh, here, it's just a one a single job for this query. And you can also check whether the stage or task failed during the execution. Um, yeah, both are very important. Uh, it could increase your execution time a lot. So that's why uh, please check the stage and the task failure. And in the job tab, um, so this, uh, you can click, uh, in Spark 2.0, we introduce uh, another link called um, Associated SQL Query. Uh, then you can easily know uh, the original SQL Query. Um, and you also can, I mean, click this uh, graph uh, that, uh, for example, uh, if you read this uh, page, it shows complete the stages. The second one takes uh, 52 seconds. Then you might not care the first stage at all. The major issue is the uh, second page, uh, second stage, uh, no, second, uh, stage zero. Then you click the stage zero, you can see, okay, uh, this enter the stage tab. Uh, this tab is very useful. It contains all the task-specific information. Like you should ask yourself some question, like how the times are spent, and uh, any outlier uh, in the task execution, and uh, any tasks are very slow, or still in data size or compute time, or too many tasks or too few tasks. Maybe you need to do repetition or yeah. 
So each task correspond to a partition. So that's why um, maybe you need to do a repartition. Or whether all the partition are, I mean, uh, assigned to a single executor, then something is wrong uh, in some nodes. So yeah, and then you can scroll down, scroll down, you can see more details. Uh, let me explain a little bit more. Uh, the, the, the first one, you can see the time and status. So uh, you, uh, if, uh, to check whether any tasks are, are queued. Uh, and uh, whether and, uh, the, the next is executor ID. So this can, uh, if you need to get the log from the executor, uh, you, you need to know the which ID. Uh, and also check whether uh, the time uh, span uh, duration uh, whether they are balanced or not. And also like uh, uh, the input uh, size, the data are skewed or not. So you can get all this information from this tab. Uh, and uh, another very interesting tab is the uh, uh, executor tab. So here you can see uh, storage memory um, and understand uh, whether uh, you need uh, uh, to show the current use and available memory. Uh, the first one is uh, yeah, the shuffle read write columns uh, shows the size of data transformed between the stages. And uh, also the like, uh, task time uh, columns shows the task time and the gap detraction time. So you can easily narrow down your performance issue from this time. Um, but uh, I want to emphasize one more check. Um, Please, uh, if you have a line performance issue, it's very hard to figure out why this, um, this task or the driver is very slow or whatever. Uh, here, I want to show an example. Uh, you can click the what's that, uh, thread dump for the driver. And uh, um, yeah, so you can get the thread dump of this node. And uh, you can see, um, yeah, actually, there's some typical issues like uh, from the threads. Uh, so down, you can know whether this is uh, caused by the half metal star interaction because half metal star assess is uh, uh, synchronized. If you have, uh, I mean, the other query assessing the half metal star at the same time, uh, your query could be locked. Um, it could be very slow. If the table has so many partitions, uh, the half metal star could be a bottleneck. Uh, so here, the example is uh, trying to show you, uh, you can search. The like hive plan, you can see this one is still running, running. Uh, it might take 20 minutes. Um, yeah, so this is a big issue. Uh, I will explain how what's the work on later. And also the file listing could be very slow. Like uh, if you use uh, object store, uh, if I have so many thousand millions of files, small files, this is a big headache. Uh, also, if the query your query is so big, then the query planning could be very slow. So you can from, uh, get the thread down. Uh, you can see if it is just running in the optimizer or planner, or whatever, and they're very slow. And yeah, that means our optimizer rule. Maybe you can turn it off. So we have a, actually, we have a new conf for the SQL uh, optimizer rule. You can turn off any rule you like, uh, most of the rules. <laughs> uh, also, oh, OK, let me give uh, one more example. Uh, for the insert, this is also very typical. Uh, here is uh, try to insert partition hive tables. Uh, yeah, this is a different way, but uh, the same like the store as a packet. Uh, you can see this just 5,000 partition took almost eight minutes. It's too slow. Um, yeah, too slow. But if we um, but if we clear the thread dump, you can see okay, this is actually stuck in the hive plan. Is it caused by the performance issue of uh, um, your half not stop? But if you use uh, our native uh, table, you insert, uh, it is better, much better. Um, it is uh, reduced to less than one minute, uh, 48 seconds, but still not good enough. But if you use a uh, delta, you can see, oh, this is 27 seconds. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let me explain why delta is better. <laughs> Uh, this is a very typical performance issue for our customer. So the table has a thousand of partitions, and the half meta store overhead is big. We have to get all this metadata from half meta store. Um, if that and the table could have a one hundred, a hundreds, and thousands uh, to millions of files, the 
file system overhead also big. The listing, file listing could take forever. Uh, another uh, very common issue is uh, you might see, hit this very frequently, like not file found. Uh, if your data is not stacked, you insert data at the same time. So you need to refresh table uh, with the SQL engine uh, you are using. Uh, whatever, this three issue could take uh, uh, maybe a tens of minutes to your end-to-end -end response time. So uh, in the Delta, so we handle it very, very smartly. Like, uh, we use Spark Engine uh, to handle the metadata. We store the metadata in the transaction log. That log file actually is, uh, I mean, um, it's actual file. Uh, we, re we can use the Spark to read it, to analyze, to prune, to filter, so that's much faster. We don't need to, uh, actually, we have the item in the uh, half meta store. But that is just like a pointer, uh, points to the uh, transaction log file location. Uh, all the metadata is still stored in the uh, transaction log. So that's very important, because for 1,000 petition, zero have meta store overhead. For this, so many files, small files, we don't need to list the file. We just get the metadata directly from the, uh, the log, because this log is, uh, can be trusted. Uh, forever, or always. And then the new data is not immediately visible, only visible when you commit. And uh, when we read it, we just read uh, at, like a snapshot uh, uh, ton, uh, time. Uh, so the uh, data table state is computing on read, so that's why you never hit the fire not found issue anymore. So use Delta is super simple. Just change of partake to Delta. It is done. Then you use uh, Delta. Uh, the SQL syntax has not been supported yet. Uh, but if you use, a, I mean, Debrix, uh, yeah, you can use uh, SQL syntax also. But in the future, in super old release, uh, after we fix the, uh, uh, migrate the Delta to data source v2, then you can use Delta in all the places. Uh, Delta, yeah, here I just mentioned scalable metadata handling, but actually Delta has so many other features. Uh, I don't want to uh, mention them again and again. Uh, just click the link, you can know all the details. Uh, yeah, we have, uh, yeah, Delta usage statistics is huge. Actually, for our customer, uh, every month we have an extra byte processed. So, yeah, so for more information, uh, you can click this link. Um, yeah, so it contains a lot of information. You can learn about our SPAR performance, the query, yeah, a lot of good materials you can check. Okay, thank you. Thank you.